And I'll climb your walls You got your armor I see your flaws So welcome to the fire
Getting into the Air Force Academy is not easy. The standards are high, space is limited, the appointments are few. Candidates must compete to get in. But we are also competing. We're competing with other colleges, universities, and service academies, all who are out there aggressively chasing the best and brightest. We need to make sure we're not missing out on a future pilot, a future general officer, or future American hero. That's why we've assembled a comprehensive team to help students each step of the way. We begin with regional teams whose responsibility it is to attract, recruit, mentor, and evaluate potential cadets all over the world. They reach out to every congressional district, state, and territory and search for the right recruits to create a diverse and well-represented student body. We have counselors on campus that applicants can contact at any time with any questions, and special admissions tours are conducted to give students a glimpse at what a typical day is like at the academy. Once a student applies, an in-depth analysis of their application is conducted utilizing cognitive variables like GPA, standardized test scores, and education theories, as well as non-cognitive variables that are not always so obvious, like grit and resiliency, traits that may prove instrumental in having a successful career at the academy. After the application file is complete, the gloves come off. An admissions committee conducts a holistic review of each candidate's file and makes its recommendation. Then it's up to the admissions group to approve which candidates will be submitted to the academy board, who will ultimately make the final decision. If a student has made it this far, they've proven themselves exceptional. But our mission is not done. Throughout each application cycle, we look for opportunities to improve and validate our process so that we're better able to attract and guide future cadets through this demanding process. Ultimately, our job is not to make it easier to get into the academy, but to make it easier for the academy to attract and select the right cadets. Because our Air Force and our nation depend on it. I am an American Airman. I am a warrior. I have answered my nation's call. I am an American Airman. My mission is to fly, fight, and win. I am an American Airman, wingman, leader, warrior. I will never leave an Airman behind. I will never falter, and I will not fail. Welcome back to another Air Force Back and forth, this is the Air Force Recruiting Services only live stream. I'm Tech Sergeant Greg Cerny. And I'm Master Sergeant Jody Reed. Today we're talking about Air Force Academy, all things Air Force Academy. Um, it's located in Colorado Springs, and it is one of the most prestigious academic institutions in the world. Um, one of the cool things about it is they have 30 different majors and 13 different minors, ranging from everything in like science and engineering all the way to military studies, obviously. Right. 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 Um, cadets can basically go in, if you join the Air Force Academy, you would go in as a cadet and you would earn your Bachelor of Science degree and you would graduate as a commission officer in the Air Force or Space Force. Oh, and also, we can see the comments that you guys are putting up already. Um, and during the countdown timer, we actually had this comment pop through. And just to address that, uh, no, it is not pre-recorded. So this is live. Uh, the questions you guys put in there are gonna be put up on screen. You just put a cue, we'll get to that stuff later, but you put a cue in there and then we'll read them and work with you guys in real time, so. Hello, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we're gonna go through today is we're gonna kinda introduce the Air Force Academy, we're gonna give you some information, and then later in the show, we're gonna turn it over to the question and answer section where you guys can ask any questions that we haven't answered already, and we'll get to those and answer them live, um, and we've got some awesome guests that we'll introduce here in a little bit. So basically, um, if you successfully apply and are accepted into the Academy's four-year-long all-expense-paid education program, you find out what life is like on campus, uh, from basic cadet training to classroom studies to extracurricular stuff, such as like sports and clubs and community involvement and stuff like that. So now let's get to our guests. All right. Joining us from the class of 22, we have uh, Lieutenant Hong. Um, from the class of 22 also, we have Lieutenant White, and holding it down from the class of 97, that would be 93. our very own Air Force Recruiting 
I think it was 93. 93. My mistake. My mistake. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Little I asked. I asked like five minutes ago, too. So I should have remembered. should have written it down on my Palm Pilot. Um, it was our very own from Air Force Recruiting Service, uh, Mr. Barry Dickey. So welcome to the show. And, but before we get started, we do want to bring in some news. Um, the class of 2023, the graduating class of the United States Air Force Academy, will be graduating this week on June 1st. Uh, this is going to be pretty big because uh, President Joe Biden will give the commencement address at wow. this year's graduation That's ceremony. not something so, that the president normally goes to. No. no. So it's going to be pretty big. Um, 2023, uh, one of our guests, um, uh, Mr. Dickey, graduated in 93. So what's that? Um, 30 30 years, 30, sir? 30 years, 30 yeah. years. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't remember 93 over 97, so I'm not going to answer right. math questions right now. <laughs> cool. Very cool. All right, well, why don't you guys introduce yourself? Mr. Dickey, please uh, give us a little bit of an idea of who you are. Okay. Well, you kind of hit some of the highlights there. I am a 1993 graduate of the Air Force Academy, so 30 years ago this week. Um, I did 26 years in the active duty Air Force awesome. uh, as a maintenance officer and then as a C-130 navigator, so a little air crew time there and did a bunch of other jobs in the Air Force. And now I'm, uh, as a civilian, after I retired, I got this job as a Department of the Air Force civilian as the uh, Chief Marketing Officer for the Air Force and the Space Force. So I get to work with you guys uh, and a lot of other great folks that are uh, putting out those commercials and websites and chats and everything else we do. So, uh, so pretty cool. Excited to be here. Gotcha. Thank you so much. I uh, I heard a rumor that you played sports at the academy. Yeah, it's it's kind of a rumor. I was on a team. I played uh, I played football for a couple of years. Uh, okay. Was recruited to play there, and then uh, as it turns out, I was not good enough <laughs> to play <laughs> to play I'm... Division One football. So uh, anyway, it was uh, it was a great while it lasted. That's awesome. That's really cool. Another cool opportunity. Some of the sports programs at the academy, some of the best like best in the country. It's really really cool. Um, let's see, Sar um, Lieutenant Wong, Hong, sorry. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Second Lieutenant Joshua Hong. Uh, I'm an admissions advisor for the Air Force Academy, and I'm stationed here in Syracuse, New York. And uh, yeah, I graduated from the Air Force Academy about a year ago this week. So it's kind of insane uh, to see where I am just a year later after graduating. Um, but yeah, I do admissions for the Air Force Academy here in New York. So for all my New York applicants, I'll be here uh, helping you out. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right. And Lieutenant, Lieutenant White. Hi, my name's uh, Second Lieutenant Faith Schatz. I actually got married like last night. Wait. Month. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. I'm looking at two different oh, names. The one on the screen is correct, and the one that I'm looking at on my script here, I was like, that's not the right name. I said it, and I was like, but I reread it, and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm already doing great today. I'm just going to mute this and turn it over to you. I'm in the middle of all the name transitions, so I understand. Um, Anyways, I graduated from the Air Force Academy one year ago today also with uh, Lieutenant Hong, and it's it's just been a, an incredible journey being able to work for the admissions office of the uh, Air Force Academy. I am currently out in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, so right outside Pittsburgh. And basically what me and Lieutenant Hong do are we, we go around to different events. We go into high schools and talk to students just about what the academy is and what the application process looks like. And we just get to mentor you students. So it's a it's a really fun job. And after this, uh, in a couple months, actually, I'll be headed off to pilot training. So. Awesome. So when you when you say admissions, do you actually um, help the, the new students who are interested in applying for the academy? Do you help them with admission into the academy? In terms of like mentoring them through that application process, if they have any questions about when they can start applying, what uh, things they need to include, if they have any questions specifically about the application, we can guide them in that process. Or if we're not able to answer their question, we can point them in the right direction. Okay. And Very cool. And does everybody get to do what you did um, before they go to their training, or is that something special? I would say it's something a little special. It was a, a position we applied for our senior year at the Air Force Academy. Uh, we interviewed for it, and fortunately, we were picked up for it. So there's, there's I think, about 30 of us that do this, this job, either all over the country or at the Air Force Academy at our headquarters office. Okay, awesome. Gotcha. Very cool. And I, we kind of, like, we've heard now that you guys that's one year out first off congratulations that's really cool a year and in, year in today now i understand from that graduation point so congratulations that's really exciting and then mr dickey you're talking about 
30 years ago, but then also within a very close time frame of the same date. So right. it's a lot of the conclusion of all of these things sort of happening all at the same time. That's really cool that you guys are all here low-key celebrating by being <laughs> on the live stream. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So very cool. Well, what's been the what's been your favorite part about being uh, able to be a part of that admissions program and, and working with the new cadets and stuff like that? I would say just the the reward and that that sense of accomplishment that you were able to kind of pass the baton. I know uh, last week I was at an admission ceremony or like a appointment ceremony. It was a student senior high school like award ceremony, and I presented her appointment to her, and it was just so incredible seeing that her family celebrate around her. Mm. And I was able to give some tips and advice that you know I learned from my experience, and and just that sense of a of accomplishment, not only in myself, but being able to celebrate alongside another student that's worked really hard to get there. So that'd that's be the cool. most rewarding part of my job. Yeah, that'd be sounds like it's really rewarding. Right, I bet. And what are some of the admission requirements that you're looking at or, or mentoring the uh, the students t towards joining the academy? And when should they start applying? Lieutenant Hong, why don't you take that one? Yeah, of course. So there's a couple base requirements for entering the Air Force Academy. So the first thing is probably the age limit. So there are some specifics about it, but generally you have to be under 22 years old while you're applying, um, as well as being uh, not married with no dependents. So that means no wife and no, or sorry, no spouse or no kids. Um, and also you have to be a United States citizen. So mm -hmm. those are some of those baseline requirements when it comes uh, to the admissions process. And in terms of the timeline of how it works, for most people, if you're in high school right now, um, along that conventional timeline, then you'll probably be able to start your application, like the very basic stuff, in maybe March or April of your junior year in high school. And then the real kick to the admissions process starts in September or in the fall of your senior year. Uh, so that's generally how it will go for most uh, normal high school students. But like I said, there's lots of different ways to get into the Air Force Academy. There's people that go to college for a couple of years and then apply to the Air Force Academy or uh, take a gap year. So as long as you fit those baseline requirements, you can apply to the Air Force Academy. Thank you, sir. That's cool. It's pretty rigorous, but it's also rewarding and also can give you an opportunity unlike anything else that you've ever had. Hey, sir, do me a quick favor. Um, your collar has eaten inside of your top, so just uh, adjust the outside of that. <laughs> Other side, there you go. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so I've heard that there's a limited number of cadets that can actually apply or not, that can actually get in and then graduate every year. What What's that like knowing that there's a limited number of people and, and what kind of result do you see in the cadets that apply as far as like an additional challenge for them since there's a limited number, it's an exclusive opportunity. And anyone can answer that one because I can, I can I speak know. to this. Okay. Um, we have about, uh, we have over 10,000 applicants every single year and we wow. accept around 1200. So that's, that's pretty, pretty wow. uh, competitive. However, something that I would like to say is, a good majority of those applicants um, either find themselves not qualified either due to um, academic requirements or maybe just basic age requirements. Um, so we lose about a couple hundred in between like the total applicants just clicking apply on our website uh, versus those that we accept into our candidate pool. And then out of that candidate pool, those that are fully qualified and complete their application is only around like 3,200. So if you think wow. about qualified applicants that completely finish their application versus that around 1,100, 1,200 that we, that we accept, um, I wouldn't say it's as competitive. So we like to tell our applicants, you know, hey, complete to compete. You know, if you, you Google the acceptance rate, it's going to be around 10 to 13 percent. But that's that wow. overall number, right? Those that just hit click to apply versus the total number that we took. But get through that application. Uh, make sure you do your research. Pay attention to those deadlines and you're looking at closer to a 30 percent acceptance rate if you make it all the way through our process oh, wow. this may sound like a silly question um but I, my, I have a 16 year old we were talking to his high school counselor and she was telling us that um some colleges automatically accept you into the college if you're in the top 10 percent in the class and others in, if you're in the top five percent does the academy do anything like that Unfortunately, no, it, it's that same standard application <laughs> process thinking. all the way across. I mean, it has to be fair, right? Right. Um, you know, some people are, are graduating in a class of 30 people versus me. I graduated out of a, a 
class of 700 in my high school, right? So a little bit different. It's got to be fair across the board. Everyone goes through that whole application process. Uh, I've got a question for Mr. Dickey. What, from the AFRS standpoint, so from Air Force Recruiting Service, what do we offer the academy? Like, how do we work in concert with those guys? Well, from a marketing standpoint, we do all of their advertising. We do all of their partnerships. Sure. All the things that the LTs are going out to engage with the public, we, we take care of that from where we're sitting. So all the, you know, if you've got a FIRST Robotics team or, or – that's a, that's a pretty good example, but uh, that's what we do as far as marketing. We run their website. We uh, we just help them manage uh, the leads that they get and try to portray the best image of the Air Force Academy that we can uh, mm-hmm. to get those the best and brightest out there to, to finish those applications like the LT mentioned. So that's what we do. Very cool. I actually get the privilege to be part of the the process of helping with some of those ads, and I can tell you. Uh, some of those are incredible. The commercials, some of the advertisement, uh, those efforts result in some of the coolest looking stuff you've, I've ever seen on TV. Like you've seen them on national television, on YouTube. When you see those, you, the like any ads or any kind of commercials, that's what Mr. Dickey's talking about. Like those kind of things, those are the marketing efforts that Air Force Recruiting Services is directly pushing out to the world. Uh, and it's really cool to see that and be part of some of those is, is an awesome experience. So. Yeah. I got a question Uh, for Lieutenant Hong and Lieutenant Schatz. Did you all play any sports when you were in the academy, uh, for the academy? Um, So I can go first. Uh, I didn't play any Division I sports or competitive sports, but I was definitely part of a couple uh, recreational clubs. So I was part of the Taekwondo team. So there's lots of uh, fun sports. And I tried out for intramural tennis, but didn't make the cut because a lot of the cadets are real athletes. I mean, you got some real beasts out there at the Air Force Academy, um, but there is a whole plethora of athletic teams, Division One, recreational, intramural, and uh, every cadet just about plays a sport, uh, even if it's intramurals while they're at their time at the Academy. Okay. You say Taekwondo, uh, what belt did you get to? Um, so actually, uh, I was just short of getting my black belt. So it's oh! Got to go back and, and finish that up. I can. Uh, so I did Taekwondo for a long time, for 14 years, and getting my black belt was probably one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my life. So definitely highly recommend go get that because red is, red is cool, but like <laughs> is it red before black for you or is it brown? Uh, yeah, it was red. Red, yeah. So red's cool. Like you have some seniority, but that yeah. black belt just hits different. So literally and as a pun. He's not so. done. <laughs> he's he's, he's going to get it. Yeah, he'll go get it. And uh, Lieutenant Shat. So I actually tried out for the Division One soccer team. Uh, mm-hmm. Did not make the cut. Boy, they have an impressive team. Uh, really top tier athletes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did, uh, in, instead of that, participate in the marching band at the Air Force Academy, where oh. called the, the Drum and Bugle Corps is what it's referred to. So it consists of drums and bugles, so brass only instruments. Um, but that in itself was like a sport. I didn't do marching band in high school or anything like that, so learning to march in a disciplined manner, a little bit different from Air Force marching, but mostly the same while holding an instrument, uh, multitasking, you know, reading a piece of music, coordinating with other individuals of the band and, you know, playing with a consistent uh, flow of air just to, to make the instrument do what it needs to do. It was, it was very much a new sport for me, uh, right. but I loved it. So did you have that experience from high school? No, I didn't do marching band in high school. I did soccer instead. I was a part of just the concert band in high school. So mm-hmm. this was like a new, a new challenge for me, marching while playing an instrument. It was very, very fun. We got to travel all over. Um, we traveled to the away football games. So wherever the football team went, we went also. Okay. So it was very, very fun I'm opportunity. Not going to lie, for a split second, I just had this weird, like, I thought you were going to say that you also did Taekwondo and you got to your <laughs> second degree black belt and we were just going to have to leave the chat and be just done. <laughs> <laughs> <We're out. laughs> um, what's acad- like uh, the workload like what's the academics like as you know as a student as a cadet uh, at the academy actually here I got a great idea so we'll take one of the lieutenants first and then we'll compare it to how it was 30 years ago yeah and we'll find out if he walked uphill both ways or like what the difference is yeah in the snow uh, in the snow I guess. right <laughs> Um, so if I'm hearing you right, it's about the academic life, like yeah, the yeah, workload, yeah. like the workload and the life, uh, kind of the lifestyle and how the balance is and stuff like that. Cause it's obviously gonna be challenging. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, I like to think that the Air Force Academy, they really plan your day out to the minute and to the hour. Mm -hmm. Um, So you'll be hustling and bustling for most of your day. Um, It definitely varies by person. Uh, I know most people and almost all cadets will say that the academic rigor is quite um, difficult and that uh, the hardest part is time management. I think especially freshman year, a lot of cadets struggle with being able to fit in, doing homework, studying for tests, as well as all the other training that you're going through. Um, So it is quite difficult. Um, But for me personally, I would say it was challenging at first, just adjusting to all the course load. Um, But I was able to get it to a manageable pace by sophomore year, which generally isn't the case for everyone. Um, But either way, I think that one thing that is sure is if you really try hard and you really put in your best effort, then you can make it work, especially if you work with your instructors and get some extra tutoring and things like that, which there is a lot of at the Air Force Academy. Sure. Take full advantage of all the resources that are available and really make that help the trajectory and and get your success rate as high as possible. Yeah. Mr. Dickey, how about you? Sound about right or? Yeah, that's uh, that's that's pretty much right. I uh, I, I struggled mm-hmm. a little bit with academics the first uh, the first two years as well, just until I got it uh, figured sure. out and got a you know a good uh, method of studying and all of those other kind of things that it takes to be a good student. I think sure. depending on your major, most people are taking between eighteen and twenty one hours uh, a semester, which is a pretty big course load. That that's in addition to all the intramural stuff that uh, that they talked about just a second ago. So there's a, it's, it's definitely difficult, but that's what it's supposed to be. It's uh, you know, that's why you're there because you got chosen from uh, a bunch of people that applied to, to see if you could make it through the program. Yeah. Um, and academics was a tough part of it for me. I think it's, that was probably the toughest for me over. Oh. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the intramural sports, is that a requirement? And if it isn't, what are the sports requirements or the physical requirements during the academy? Well, I didn't know, so I can't tell you. <laughs> one, of the, one of the lieutenants needs to go because I, I I don't know if I've got the right info on this. Okay. So you may hear, uh, well, you'll hear it now and you probably will hear it again. Uh, every cadet is an athlete. So mm. there are three primary ways to participate in a sport and participating in some form of, form of athleticism is required. So that first way that we kind of talked about is that division one athletics. So if you are a division one athlete, that's your sports. Mm. Uh, we also have club sports. So maybe you're not playing on a division one team, whether uh, you didn't make the cut or you don't want to, you want some a little more time on your hands, uh, but still that competitive sport environment, you can participate in our club sports and they still get to travel and compete mostly against division two and division three schools. Uh, but less of a commitment. And then lastly is squadron intramurals. So your squadron, for those of you who don't know, it's it's similar to, for lack of better terms, like like your sorority or your house, that it's consists of about 100 students, all uh, comprising of all freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And uh, at about two to three days a week, you'll go out to the sports sport fields and you'll just play, play different sports. You can sign up for um, Let's see, we have nine different sports in the fall and a different set of nine sports in the spring. You can sign up to be a player, uh, manager, coach, anything like that. And you just compete against the other squadron. So it builds that 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 sense of being a team, a uh, little bit of competition, pride in your your squadron and the people that that you work with. Um, and that that would be the last option uh, for cool. sports participation. Got it. Thank you. Is that so it's a requirement? Everybody has to play a sport or do something athletic. So that sounds to me like a lot of demand, but also a lot of reward. And I suppose it makes sense if you're trying to identify who the best of the best are and then turn them into the next generation of leaders for the Air Force or Space Force. That's that's pretty cool. Um, I got a kind of a question that I I don't know, it just seemed kind of popped up, but like if you are as a cadet in the academy, what's the dress code like? Like, can you wear like civvies? Do you have to wear a uniform? Like what, do you wear blues all the time? Blues all the time. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Lieutenant Hong can jump in here too, as he pleases. Um, your freshman year, you will only be wearing a uniform. Uh, civilian clothes are not allowed until oh, you wow. complete uh, an event we call recognition, which is kind of like a two and a half days back into basic training at the end of your freshman year. Hmm. Um, but until then, no civilian clothes, not even off base. If you're traveling wow. home for uh, 
for Thanksgiving break or winter break, you'll be wearing your, your service dress, which is, you know, the dress blues uniform. Uh, however, after that, um, after recognition, you are able to wear civilian clothes. Normally that takes place after what we call military call to quarters. It's uh, just a, a specific time of day, if that makes sense. I think mm -hmm. for us, it happened at, uh, let's see, was it? 7 15 at night 5 15 at night i can't remember somewhere mm -hmm. around then and then you're able to wear civilian clothes and it changes from year to year whether or not you're allowed to, to wear them in the hallway or or whatever but um to school you would wear uh let's see blues the first two days of the week okay ocps so that's this camouflage looking uniform the next two days of the week so wednesday and thursday and then Fridays are flight suit Fridays. So that's oh, what it that's looks cool. like. That's what you're wearing to class and you're expected to, like. to maintain that professionalism, right? You can't just roll out of bed and throw clothes on and, and hope you, you're up to standards, right? So there's, there's that aspect of, honestly, uh, military discipline and professionalism that's being developed just through something as simple as dress code. Gotcha, that's cool. Um, so I've got one more question and then we will get into the question and answer section with our audience out there. And just as a reminder, um, you can put a cue before your question in the chat and then we will put up on the screen. We'll ask the question and then we'll let whoever is the most applicable person to ask the question or to answer the question, uh, kind of take that away and just as quickly as we can get that information out to you. Also, you'll see the QR code that just popped up on there. Those are going to be for any questions that we don't get to because I'm already seeing hundreds and hundreds yeah. of questions kind of come through. If we don't get to your question, uh, you can either call that phone number, you can go to airforce.com or you can scan that QR code. And we have people standing by like right now, active, active, active live people to interact with you and get you the answers to those questions. You'll also notice that we may potentially have answers put up on the screen because we have members in the chat that are also individually DMing people and sending them answers to their questions if they're really long questions or if it's specific or something that we don't put, have the ability to put up on the screen. So keep the questions coming in. We will start, we're already selecting our favorites than the ones that we wanna put up on the, on the screen. Um, and then we will get to those in a second. But one more question and basically what is the minimum service requirement for a cadet? Like if somebody wanted to join the academy and they wanted to go to the Air Force Academy, what, how long do they need to commit to? Uh, yeah, I'll take that. So I think the very, uh, the fastest route you can uh, take to get out of the military after you go to the Air Force Academy, it, uh, we call it five and dive. So essentially okay. you'll be going to the Air Force Academy for four years and then you'll commission as an officer, which means you'll graduate with the lieutenant rank, and then you will serve in the military for about five years, and then after that, you can get out of the military. So the fastest time frame, I suppose, from the time you enter is about nine years. Gotcha. So it's not necessarily a minimum, but it sounds like the quickest way to get back to civilian service and have also done your military component as well. Right, Got right. It. Very cool. So I, I know that um, you said that people can join if they were already in college. So if somebody, let's say somebody completed two years of college or 20 years old, would the academy require them to only do two years in the academy or will it start over? No, it's going to be a four-year program for everyone, uh, wow. which I know there are even some people that finish their bachelor's. So they finish college uh, for four years and then they mm -hmm. still went back to the Air Force Academy to get another bachelor's. Wow. Uh, that's cool. Spending eight years at school. But Over yeah, years. there's different paths for everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. Drum roll. This is the part of the show where we get to the questions and answers where you, the audience, can interact with us and our guests in real time. Uh, let's throw our first question up on the screen and we'll get started. Does my credit have anything to do with the uh, with enlistment? Hmm. I'm thinking he's she, a recruiter, so I think I'm she's let him asking um, college credit. So if you're if you're enlisted into the Air Force and you have over 20 college semester hours, up to 44 college semester hours, that would get you the enlisted grade of E2. Okay. If you have more than 45 semester hours, that would get you enlisted grade E3. So what if they're talking about like their actual credit score? Oh. Yes. So this would, is two for one. So we get two answers out of one. That would cause... affect um, your your enlistment process as well. Um, so the Air Force, if you're over the age of 23, they will automatically do a credit check on you. Um, and what they're looking for is any type of like outstanding balances, anything in collections, anything like charge off, repossess, anything like that. If they find anything like that, it will require you to do a financial eligibility determination. Um, 
And also, if you are trying to get into any of the top secret jobs or jobs that require higher security clearance, those will automatically trigger you to have a credit check as well. Um, depending on what, what is found during that credit check, that can determine if you're eligible for those type of careers. So, yes, both. Best, best bet is going to be go talk to your recruiter. Yep. Uh, obviously, your particular situation and your unique credit score will have a difference, and you can talk to the recruiter and see whether it's something that you're good to go with or whether you might need to take a, little, a hard look at your credit and see if you can do some things to, to fix it, and then you might be eligible. So yep. talk to your recruiter, for sure. Good catch on the extra, the second credit definition. I, that's what I thought it was the first time, <laughs> and then I, I wasn't going to cut you off because yeah. I was like, hey, this is applicable information. If you're trying to join the military with college credits, yeah. you've had that question before, and it's a great question. Yep. But then I read it again, and I was like, what do you think like, like the FICO score? Which, by the way, did you know that the name Isaac is in FICO? Is that acronym? When it, I, I know it's weird. It's like federal Isaac something something. I'm if I'm wrong, it's <laughs> dumb. But like I, now, every time I hear credit score, I just think of like buddy Isaac. I went, to, I went to high school with his name was Isaac, and I'm like apparently that guy's running like my credit score. Like my whole life is revolving around whether or not the I can most get a important car. one too. FICO is the good one. Yeah, the one right. that Most people look at. Right, right, right. All right, let's get to the next question. All right. Are there any postdoc PhDs with non-military background employed at the U.S. Air Force Academy? Are they doing mainly research or giving courses or both? Hmm. I wonder, so Mr. Like, Dickey, if you, if you know that. Yeah, I, could, I mean, the short answer is yes. Um, they're, they've got all kinds of civilian instructors with no, um, with no military background that are hired on to, to, uh, to teach classes and do the re research there. They also hire them later on in life at, at institutions like Air University, which is our um, professional military education and a, a master's granting organization where they have a whole slew of PhDs that are employed to, uh, to teach military members about uh, whatever subject they're the expert in. Thank you, Mr. Dickey. Thank you. Oh, and uh, two-part next piece. Uh, somebody commented in the comments that it is the Fair Isaac Corporation. So I was off by a, definitely a couple of them. But Isaac is in the name. Uh, and also it was a comment by... Um, Sergeant Patterson, so Holly oh, Patterson, that's a... who just so happens to be <laughs> our guest of honor, well, not guest of honor, host of honor from last, last. show, and I hadn't had a chance to because we kind of got in the flow of this show, and I completely forgot to shout you out. Thank you so much for the assist on that. You did a phenomenal job. I have to step up my performance, and <laughs> otherwise I'm going to get kicked out of this seat, and you're just going to come swooping in and steal all my all my thunder. But thank you so much for helping me out. I had to kind of go out of state to take care of some family business, and it meant the world to me that you were able to step up and kill it. Like, yeah, I came in here, and you know, obviously Sergeant Reed is just absolutely singing your praises. Yeah, and I was like, and you guys thought I was all that. <laughs> we're just. They teach us well, right? And then he was just like, she was amazing. And I was like, but like, not like amazing, amazing. He was like, no, she was amazing. And I was on my way back, driving back from um, Kansas City and on my way back down to Texas. I was able to listen to the whole show. So yeah. I heard all the all little shout outs and some of the love and then some of the teasing. So I was yeah. like, I appreciate it. It was, good. it was a good show. So thank you so much for, for doing that for us. We really appreciate it. And we'll have you back on the show. Yeah, I definitely. think the people have spoken. Enough people were like, they, yeah, keep her. I we, was like, they want her back. That's right. That's right. All right, let's do one more question. Can I get in with a medical marijuana card? It expires in a couple months, and I haven't consumed or smoked THC in months as well. I'm clean. Is just having the license unacceptable? That is a really good question because as a general rule, no marijuana use in the military, right? right. But if you have had marijuana use before applying to the military, there's like an acceptable amount. You want to talk more to that? So it's kind of in your range. Yeah. So so the acceptable amount is going to be determined by the chief medical officer up at MEPS. So they're going to look to see if you if you have like a habitual usage. Um, my 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 biggest concern there would be the medical marijuana card would would usually deem that there was a medical problem, and that's where you're going to have the the issue. So my biggest advice would be just to reach out to a recruiter. And, and run it by them, uh, and they will be able to get into the regulations and maybe even um, send your, your question up to the chief medical officer for further evaluation. That way you can for get sure. a solid answer because just I'm just going off of my, top of my head. I don't have any regulations in front of me, so I may not be given the strongest answer. What would be really cool is if that question prompted a change from this show. That'd be pretty cool. Oh, my God. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, this show will be doing things. <laughs> this show is already doing things. You can ask Sergeant Patterson. <laughs> All right. Oh, take me back. <laughs> I mean, there's space. 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we'll find a spot for you, for sure. We'll absolutely find a spot for oh, you. Oh, my gosh. All right, next question. Is a non-USA citizen eligible to apply? That would be if they don't have a green card, yes. If you, don't not, if you do not have a, an active green card, then you wouldn't be able to apply. Right. So you can be non-U.S. citizen with a green card and still apply. Yep. Right. So green about, card is uh, kind of like the magic ticket there. How about for the Air Force Academy? LTs, you got an answer form on that one? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we might have just hit two as well, well right? Um, U.S. citizenship is, is a requirement yeah. uh, for the Air Force Academy. No green cards at the uh, Academy. I believe you have to have the full citizenship. Yeah. Correct. Right, right, right. All right. Let's get the next one. Can you join the Air Force if you have an HIV? Mm. That's you. I don't know. I don't know. I, so I we wouldn't did, wanna... We did medical right. uh, a couple shows ago, and we had some pretty cool questions and a mm -hmm. lot of really, really useful information. And that's outside of my expertise and knowledge, which is... Mine, too. Um, I will say from experience... Um, I did have somebody who tried doing this with herpes and they got denied. I've okay. also had somebody who tried doing this with herpes and they got approved. So I've seen both um, of the same SCDs mm -hmm. get denied and approved. Okay. Um, but that was, I know that herpes is probably a little bit lesser than HIV. Once again, I would say just reach out to a recruiter and see what they can do. Um, or you can use that code or call that number and talk to somebody who can give you a, a more clear answer about that. So I definitely recommend you um, scan that code or call that number. Well, we may also hey. ping our people in the chat and see if we can get somebody on that because that's a really good question, and we try to make sure we get an answer for everybody's question. Right. Mr. Dickey, would you add something? No, I was just going to add, we've got a whole medical waivers division within right. recruiting service. So um, if for some reason you get to your military entrance processing uh, facility and the head doc, the head doctor there does not clear you through. There's, a, there's other avenues that you can go through. Uh, to try to get waivers uh, to join okay. the Air Force and Space Force. So gotcha. it's, it's just like uh, like you guys stated, it's the best avenue is to talk to a recruiter, mm -hmm. uh, to start the process through talking uh, with a recruiter. Okie dokie. Yeah. All right. We had, I think we might have bumped a cable or something. Um, yeah. Let me just do a real quick audio check. Lieutenants, can you guys hear Mr. Dickey talking right there at the end of his answer? Cool. As long as you guys can hear it, that means the rest of the broadcast can hear it, and we'll figure out the cable that we bumped over on this end. We just wanted to make sure we're not cutting anybody off or that the line goes quiet and yeah. someone's just, you know, talking. Um, <laughs> All right. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, next question. I know we're kind we of putting where Major where on the spot right now because he's trying to figure out which cable got bumped or whatever happened. Yeah. Are you I good, Major? Let's get all these. Okay. I think he's good. Unlit. Get those green ones off of there. All right. Uh, hi. Thank you for your service. I'm a registered nurse with more than 10 years experience. Is there a cutoff age for me to join? And what benefits are there for a registered nurse? Thank you again. Let me see if I can take this one. So for nurse, if you're going enlisted, you have to be in basic training before your 40th birthday. Well, to be a nurse, they have to commission. So he would still before 40. Okay. But he it wouldn't be an enlisted position. I'm getting commission. there. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> okay. So before 40 is your cutoff date. Right. So you want to be at your first level of training by the, your by your 40th birthday. Right. So they have 10 years of experience. And I think the second part of the question was what benefits are there? Now that that's going to be out of my um out of my expertise of as far as um benefits. I know you're going to get the same benefits that everyone gets when they join the Air Force, but I'm assuming you're probably asking specific questions like what what nursing benefits do you get? And that I wouldn't be able to answer. So I would say once again, um, that question, scan that QR code or dial, or use that phone number um, to answer that specific question or reach out to a recruiter um, who will be able to help you with that. And thanks for the shout out and yep. the support. We appreciate it. So, all right, next one. Is the COVID vaccine required for the academy? I know it's not required for enlisted anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine it's the same. And you guys are asking some good questions. <laughs> yeah. Don't stop because now it's got us thinking. But that's a good one. Sir, do you happen to know back there? Or lieutenants? Or lieutenants. I think that's that's pretty unclear. I know while we were attending the Air Force Academy, um, which was, you know, about a year ago, the right. COVID vaccine was essentially mandatory, except for some very, very 
extreme cases. Mm -hmm. um, but I really don't know what the current policy is uh, on the vaccination requirements. I believe, actually, I believe the incoming do have sorry. to be vaccinated. Yeah. Um, sorry, we're still having some cable <laughs> issues. Are you hearing now, Major? No, but it's fine. As long as you can hear. I think we bumped. If you hit those yeah. green, hit the green ones. The green ones shouldn't be on. The green ones shouldn't be on? Correct. Okay. All right. There you go. He's still on the other side, so I asked him a question, and he's just like gets up and he's like, "Can you all hear?" And yeah. I'm like I hope we can. Otherwise, it's been a couple minutes where we're not saying anything. We're all just kind of staring at each other, a little sign yeah. language. Um, so sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but you were saying that when you were there about a year ago, that the except for some rare situations, the shot was mandatory. But now, in order to apply, not to apply, but to get accepted into the Air Force Academy, the question is, do you have to have the COVID vaccine? COVID vaccine. So I know um, probably, I think about six months ago, maybe, there was some um, guidance that came out that said the COVID vaccine is no longer a requirement. And I know that was for enlistment, enlistment, enlistment purposes, but I didn't do enough research to determine if that was for the academy as well. I'm assuming so, but... I can't give a 100% clear answer. So once again, that would be one of those things. I would say scan that QR code um, or dial that number to get the 100% the clear answer on that. And we'll keep an eye on the chat also um, and let our members that are there answering questions, they've got a little quicker access to the resources at their fingertips, and we'll keep an eye on that. And if we do get an answer there, we'll throw it up on the screen and we'll kind of follow back up on that one. All right. Can I get an easy question? <laughs> hey, there's an easy one. Air power. Air power. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right, another easy question. <laughs> I'm I just want to jump in really quick and say I just got confirmation that it is no longer still required. Boom. It, it there we go. COVID vaccine isn't required at the academy? No awesome. longer required. Sounds good. Thank you so much for doing that. Awesome. Appreciate the follow-up. It makes it really easy. All right. How often does the show air? And is there a schedule I can follow to tune in? Oh, yeah. uh, the schedule is super easy. It's every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock. It's super easy to remember. The cool thing about the show also is the fact that it's recorded. And so we post the video up after the show gets done airing. And that is hosted on our Facebook page, our YouTube page, and our Instagram. Well, is it on Instagram? Is the show hosted on Instagram? No, on okay, LinkedIn. no. It airs on Insta or LinkedIn. Is it? But does the, does the recorded video stay on LinkedIn? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you can go back and watch all of our previous shows. I think there's eight other ones before this one. And then to catch the next one live, um, tune in every Tuesday at 2 o'clock. And if you visit our Facebook page, you'll also find the information for the upcoming show, and you'll have an idea of what the topics of those shows are. Um, but as of right now, we're only announcing what the topic is for the next show before it airs. We don't have a setup um, because we still have to schedule who the go who the hosts are or who the guests are and what the topic is and we write the show from there. So yeah. that was a good question that I can answer. Let's try another <laughs> one of those. <laughs> All right. Next question. Mm -mm -mm. When you're in college, do you join ROTC or should you wait until you join the United States Air Force? So if you're trying to join the United States Air Force as an officer, then you would want to, if you're in college now, then you would want to determine if you're going to do the ROTC route or if you're going to try to apply for the United States Air Force Academy um, or, or, or OTS. So you have that option if you complete your degree you would be able to apply for OTS. But if you're in college right now and you're trying to set yourself up to become an officer upon graduation, then the ROTC route or the academy route will be great for you. Um, so I would, I would recommend you figure that out um, if you're trying to be an officer immediately upon graduation um, or if you're trying to join enlisted. And if you're trying to join enlisted, then you wouldn't need to be part of the ROTC to do that. Cool. Yeah. All right. Next question. Hey, hey, before you go to that one, can I just add yeah, to, to sure. that one? So we have a lot of folks that come from the enlisted ranks to go to the Air Force Academy mm -hmm. or to go through ROTC um, or to go to the officer training school. So of the three commissioning routes there, there's um, there's a way for you to start your career as, uh, as an enlistee in the Air Force uh, and then move through the ranks, get selected for one of those institutions and then become an officer. So those options are available to you as well. Thank Very you, cool. sir. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's pop down back up. I'm 38. Am I too old? No. No. You got two years. 
You got to be in basic, or you got to, depending on which path you're trying to go, you got to be in OTS or you got to be in basic training before you're 40 years old. So you got two years to make this happen. Reach out to a recruiter, try to figure out your opportunities. There you go. For the grads, how did your AMT shape your time at the academy? What's AMT? Yeah, what is that? Your uh, AMT is your academy military trainer. So while at the academy, each squadron is assigned uh, sometimes one or, or, or two academy military trainers. That would be an enlisted member, typically a technical sergeant, sometimes a master sergeant, that just oversee and mentor uh, cadet operations. So I would say my junior and senior year my amt was a wonderful individual that pro provided so much mentoring to me uh, if it was something as simple as hey i'm working on this issue you know leading this thing or that operation whatever it is uh, they provide really good insight or when it comes to big life decisions or uh, air force type questions they're a great person to go to they've got so much more experience than than we did as cadets and even now as, as lieutenants, right? They've got a, a whole career uh, in the Air Force. So that's a person you definitely want to, to pick their brains in terms of experiences, lessons learned, uh, things that I can do as an individual to set me up for success after graduation. So that's my take on Academy Military Trainer. Awesome. Gotcha. Did you maintain contact with them after graduation? Yes, I did. Uh, my AMT, I'm actually Facebook friends with him. So okay. oh, that's <laughs> awesome. cool. That's great. Yeah, my like my TI when I was in basic was like, don't even think about sending me your friend request. I'll come <laughs> find you and kill you. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and he was just like, I don't want to be your friend. Yeah. <laughs> he was very like serious, which <laughs> very you know, rigid. It, tur it turned out. I mean, it, it worked out pretty well for the yeah. for the course. I mean, we graduated top flight, so it was all kinds of cool stuff. I'm a retired Air Force Senior Master Sergeant, 28 years of service. Thank you. Just wanted to say appreciate you all. Love the shows. Well, thank you so much, sir. We really appreciate it. Thanks for your service, and thanks for supporting the program. We we need as much of it as we can get and get as many answers, questions answered as we can and help everybody on their journey of Air and Space Force stuffs. Yeah, stuffs. Yeah. Stuffs. Yeah, With it's technical. Plural. <laughs> yeah. All right, next question. Can I skip ranks with a business marketing degree? With, with a university GPA of 3.3, I was also in intramural sports and a part of a fraternity. So um, you would be able to skip, and if you join the enlisted side, you would be able to skip E1 and E2, coming as an E3. Um, but with your bachelor's degree, you would also be eligible to apply as an officer. So you wouldn't be able to skip any ranks if you applied as an officer, um, but you would be able to be an officer um, mm -hmm. and, and not enlisted. Um, so you would want to do some research and determine which one of those sides of the house uh, fit better for you, whether it's enlisted or, or being an officer. So. But it sounds like you've uh, paved a bright future for yourself. Yeah. Like you're already on the right track, so you have lots of options, which is really cool. So keep up the hard <laughs> hey, work for sure. Yeah, I'm sorry, I gotta add something on this sure. one too. So um, there are opportunities in the Space Force specifically where they will take someone who's got a very uh, extensive background in engineering so your double e's your um your aeronautical astronautical engineers that have got mm -hmm. some some industry experience and they will direct commission those folks in at a rank probably that's equivalent of what you know their salary at the time then they leave civilian service so uh there's ways there's ways they can do that right so it's kind of like the medical side of the house. Um, yeah, just where not on the Air Force side. Yeah, gotcha. Some of those doctors come in as an 05, 06 because of their experience and background. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're doing that with the engineers as well. And since Space Force is part of Air Force, um, we also host a lot of questions for that. And we will be having a show on Space Force, so stay tuned for that one. And we will have tons of questions, I'm sure, on that. I'll have questions on that because <laughs> it's still so new. There's so much to learn about it. So it's, it'll be really cool. Right. All right. What would you recommend skipping? What would you recommend skipping E1 and E2 or being an officer? That's on you. That entirely depends on what you want out of the military and what you're willing to give. Yeah. Like, that's on you. I would say do your research and figure out whether the enlisted side or the officer side sounds better for you. Right. I I wouldn't want to tell you, um, from my opinion, which one is better because it just depends on person. I mean, I can't say that the enlisted side is better because. Look, we're outnumbered. No, 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 here. There's there's two officers there's and a prior officer on the call at we, the moment. And I'm like, we would lose the battle. We would lose. And also, <laughs> would... this, 
We've got the camera set up to where everyone looks like the same size. Yeah. But the dude in the middle on the bottom, Mr. Dickey, that is a large person. <laughs> I would not I would not even want to come close to making him upset. So. I would I would say let's give um you all an opportunity. Why did why did you choose without jabbing the enlisted side too hard? Why did you choose to um uh, go to the academy um, and not join the enlisted side of the Air Force? I, I can go first. Okay. Um, I'll be honest. I, I didn't even know what the difference between a enlisted and officer was going into go. the Air Force Academy. Um, all I know is that I just thought of the Air Force Academy like the Air Force College. And I was like, well, I want to go to college and I want to be in the Air Force um, because at the time I wanted to be like a superhero. So right. that's why I joined the Air Force. Oh, and I that's cool. College, Force, so. Yeah, I think there's a surprising number of people who commit to joining the military, Air Force specifically, that don't know a whole lot of the differences inside, whether it's the difference yeah. in jobs or the fact that everyone in the Air Force isn't actually a pilot or the difference between enlisted and officers. Um, and it kind of just comes down to if you don't know the difference, depends on whose office you end up in. Because if you go talk to a recruiter, they've got their path in mind. If you go and talk to a, an officer recruiter, they have a path in mind. And right. if you're eligible and you have the right you know, aspirations, you could end up doing either. But if you, obviously, if you come in and you know what you want and you're talking to the person and you give them an idea of your vector, where you want to be, they'll kind of help point you in the right direction. But I think it's, it's cool because it's not a bad thing. You know, it's just like you take what you want out of the situation and you go and they present to you an option and you learn as you go, which is kind of cool. About to have a coffin fit. Oh, you're I'll be <laughs> fighting it. <laughs> go for it. All right. Well, so we're going to let <laughs> Lieutenant, <coughs> Lieutenant Schatz want uh, sure. I would say I'm in a similar situation to Lieutenant Hong. I don't think at the time that I had chosen the academy as my path that I had really analyzed, um, you know, enlisted versus officer. I will say I, I did know that my, my goal was to be a pilot in the Air Force, and that is an officer-specific job. So in that sense, the academy made sense. Um, Maybe I should have looked a little more into ROTC. That is also another great path if you're if you're interested in being an officer in the Air Force. Uh, but it was it, it was a good decision, and I, I I could see myself being interested in many careers. But I I encourage you all if you're you're not quite sure which path is best for you, do some research on on what the responsibilities are, you know, versus enlisted and officer, and what what jobs are also available uh, specific to each side. Yeah. Oh, oh Lord! Oh, sorry, I almost lost him. <laughs> I've been sorry about that. He was holding that one for a minute, yeah. and he was just like, and I tried to work with it, it just wasn't working, so I'm we just went full mute for a second. <laughs> a little sick. I've been, I've been trying to fight that cough. It was coming. I couldn't. I it couldn't was coming. It we got him some water, <laughs> a little CPR. He's back. He's fine. All right. Scare me like that, man. All right, Mr. Dickey, <laughs> uh, why did you decide to go officer side? Well, first off, let me say thanks to Pam for that last comment up there. I kind of enjoyed that. But, uh, the, you know, here's here's what it was for me. I, I wanted to play D1 football, and, okay. I wanted to fl and I wanted to fly planes. And this opportunity came my way to go to the Air Force Academy, and I thought, hey, what a better – there's no better way to do both, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, I didn't even go on a visit to the Air Force Academy. Wow, that's said, cool. I, I just said, sign me up. So uh, left small town Texas and went uh, went straight there and and the rest played out the way it did. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there was a time where I briefly considered uh, joining the Navy or even joining the Army because I thought about being a helicopter pilot mm -hmm. um, on the enlisted side. And and I will say this much too: that you've got just as much leadership and opportunity or leadership opportunities and advancement opportunities on the enlisted side as you do on the officer side. Right. It's just, uh, you know, it's just it's just slightly different. Uh, in the way that uh, in the way that we're we're educated and what we're, we're we have to do and those kind of things, but both paths are are awesome. That was really just that was my that was my choice coming in. Gotcha. Well, we're glad that you went Air Force because <laughs> it's good to have you for one and two. Yeah, even though it too. sounds, it's like you know it kind of sounds like we're tooting our own horn here, but you wanted to be a pilot and you wanted to play D one football. Not that limited options are a bad thing, but where else in the world can you do that? So the fact that you can do that by being an officer in the Air Force, that is top tier cool. Right. The fact that you're like, I want to fly airplanes and play D1 ball. Like, Air Force, <laughs> they can do that, you know? 
That's cool. <laughs> That's really cool. It's a, it's sir, uh, Mr. Dickey, who who is Pam? Is that a is that a a family member? Is that a friend? Or just, just one of your many many fans? Just one of my many many fans. I get no, just a, a right. friend. Yeah. Okay. 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 So question for you uh not not so much question but more like a shout out and this is also for the audience uh mr dickey is actually pretty much the single point of contact for who who gave us the green light on this show so big round of applause for mr dickey for being the one person who said we can do this we're gonna push this when a lot of other people were hesitant or said no or made it very difficult to get a yes He's a stud. There you go. <laughs> I, I can't believe I just said that live on the internet, but I did. <laughs> All right, I'm thank you. The natural cool, lifter. So I'll have it for a while. Yeah. yeah, right. I'll make it like a little reel for you and send it your way. Um, but yeah, so you're um, back to your fans. Apparently, you've got quite a few of them out there now. I mean, you're going to override Sergeant Reed here. Um, <laughs> you also play guitar. Yeah. You're in a band. We gotta, we yeah, gotta hear like, all about this. I need uh, some information. Well, there. well, look, everybody's got to have a hobby, right? So, uh, so we we put together a little band when I was still on active duty um, uh, at Maxwell Air Force Base, and we started playing and got decent enough to play downtown at a couple of bars. So, um, so uh, yeah, that's it. It's uh, it's fun. It's a it's a pastime, and you know, even the old guys like to rock out a little bit. So anyway, that's all. I love it is. to hear it. What what instrument do you play, sir? I play guitar. Okay. And yeah. uh, and how do you all come together with practice? I always hear that's one of the biggest, uh, hardest things about having a band is, is practice. How do you yeah, all it, it is. Every, you know, everybody's got their life going on, so it's hard to come. It's hard to get everybody on the same schedule. It's hard to find practice space. Uh, it's it's hard to agree on what songs you want to play. Right. So it's uh, all that stuff is, is difficult, but it's fun. And, and like I said, playing an instrument and um, and – you guys can attest to this because I know some of you. Well, I've heard some of you play uh, some things. It's it's relaxing. It's a hobby. It's something you can do in your spare time. If you want to get in a band, then that's that's cool too. But uh, just having something to do that relaxes you and gets your mind off a lot of things that uh, that you're you're dealing with on a day to day basis is a, just a great way to to cope with it. Oh, 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 oh more fans. Oh, He's also a lead yeah. singer. Oh my gosh. Uh, like, yeah, you're, you're, my, you're underselling yourself, sir. Well, <laughs> that's my daughter dialing in there. That's uh, thanks, Aaron. That's so, cool. So you you started the band on active duty. So you were you were juggling the band plus your ad, active duty roles, and then you carried the band on after you retired. Wow. Yeah, we just got lucky and all moved to the same place. <laughs> that's uh, cool. All, you know, we we were all in Alabama and then wound up here in San Antonio. So that's uh, cool. So it's been. Uh, it's been pretty fortunate. That's awesome. Gotcha. Also, uh, one of your chat advisors, that's Pam. So she's not only a fan, but also one of the friendly chat advisors, which means she's one of the people that are in our chat answering questions and helping people out when we don't get to the stuff in the show. So shout out to Pam for doing what you do. We appreciate you. Shout out All right. To let's Pam. get to the next question from our audience. A big one. Retired airman here. My son is a high school sophomore with an aspirations of being an aviator. Uh, what can I do to help him prepare, become competitive, and hopefully earn a slot at the academy? Ooh, that's a good question. B keep being an awesome dad, and thanks <laughs> for your service. But it sounds like you're willing to give him a hand and help him get the best chance he can have. So, well, we got three experts who can uh, give you some advice. <laughs> All right, hot hey, round. Can we go first? You can go, uh, Lieutenant Hall. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I'll go first. Um, so what are what is the best way to prepare your son for the Air Force Academy? Um, I think in terms of things that you can concretely prepare for, academics is probably the best way to get your foot in the door, so to say. So I like to think that academics is really like the baseline of um, when we are, are looking at applicants. So really working hard at your SATs, ACTs, your standardized testing, um, getting your GPA up, which I think is pretty self-evident as, as you'd expect. Um, other than that, right, the academics, I would emphasize the most amount of effort on academics. Um, but if you have that part squared away, right, also thinking about um, how you can make your, you know, 
application unique. So at the Air Force Academy, we're always looking for diverse individuals, um, not just diverse in certain categories, but diverse experiences, right? Tell us about why you want to join, um, the kind of neighborhoods that you grew up in, and the reason uh, for why you want to join the Air Force Academy. Um, because, you know, the Air Force Academy, we also look at a whole person concept. We really want to know everything about you. And uh, Faith, feel free to fill in those blanks. Absolutely. I think that overall is, is good preparation to get into the Air Force Academy. Um, if your son is, is specifically interested in becoming a pilot, like that's his main goal, there are other ways that can help you prepare um, for that path. Uh, one, if you're able to get any scholarships to start getting flight hours, I think that's great exposure. Um, working on that private pilot certificate, a lot of the questions on that written exam um, to get your, your pilot's license, you, you'll see lots of similar questions on your AFOQT, which is the Air Force Officer Qualification Test. That's a test you'll, you'll take once you're at the academy, um, but part of how well you do on that test goes into your ability or your likelihood of being selected for that pilot slot. So any exposure to aviation knowledge that you can do now, I think that will definitely benefit you and flight hours is also going to benefit you if you have the capabilities to do that. Now that's not necessarily a requirement. I know individuals that have zero flight experience and been able to get a pilot slot as well. But in terms of just preparation and things you can do, that would be also at the top of the list, I would say. Mm. Now, Mr. Dickey, you said it at the beginning of the show, you said you struggled with academics when you were in the academy where when, when you were, I guess, applying for the academy, did you have good academics to get accepted into the academy? Yeah, I had good grades in high school. I had a good SAT score. It was just, it was more the course load and, um, you know, just the, just the, they were difficult. The, the courses were difficult. I came from a small town uh, in Texas and, uh, you know, a grad, public uh, school graduate. And so it was just, you know, it was, it was different because it was, it was, I'd never had to try that hard, um, to get through <laughs> courses. And that's really what it was. It was put your head down, be, uh, committed to studying and, uh, and, and get it done. So after I figured that part out, it was, um, it was a lot easier for me, Got but, it. uh, but yeah, you can, yeah, you can make it through there and let me, back to the, the question, the, um, there's another thing we offer too, that prepares uh, people to go be, uh, aviators. And that's, uh, we offer an aim high flight Academy. I think there's, uh, maybe three or four of them a summer, uh, where we'll take a, a student. We, you have to be selected to go to the, the course, but we'll take a student, uh, through about 20 hours of, of flying, uh, just to get them interested and get some hands-on experience and, cool. uh, and hopefully, uh, put them on a path to becoming an aviator somewhere uh, in the U S hopefully in the United States air force. <laughs> That's cool. What, what was the age on that program again, sir? Uh, I think it's, man, I don't know. I You'll have to, it's, it's, it's 16 to yeah. 16 to 20 out there or something like okay. that. It's so it's, um, you can go if you're already enrolled in college somewhere, but, uh, but it's a pretty good deal. Awesome. That's really cool. <clears throat> We're excited to get pilots in planes. So you got some pretty cool opportunities to get you set up for that. All right. Next question. <clears throat> they got me coughing. Oh, man. <laughs> Is the age cutoff still at 23 or has it changed? Uh, well, I know, I know, uh, which Lieutenant, cutoff, Hong, yeah. Lieutenant Hong had said you have to be under 22 um, earlier in the show, but I thought that the, I thought the answer is you, you have to be in the academy before your 23rd birthday. Is, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I said that as a general answer, but I think there's certain specifics, which is by like July of the year that you're entering into the Air Force Academy, you have to be under the age of 23. Faith, you know, like the actual specifics? Yeah. like You can't be past your 23rd birthday by July 1st of the year that you would enter. Gotcha. Got it. So yes, 23. You got the right answer. All right. Can I retest for my ASVAB if I didn't like my score? So that the the answer is yes, but the the issue with it is um, actually I think that there was some recent changes on it. Talk to your recruiter. I don't want to I don't want to say anything because I believe that they just recently changed it to where you don't have to be debt discharged anymore to retake the ASVAB. Um, I'd say talk to your recruiter about that. But the the answer yes is recruiters just don't like it because if you have a good score 
and you do, let's say you take the test again, then the new score is going to stick over. So let's say you had a 60 and then you retake the test, you, you scored a 44. Now you have a 44, which is why recruiters don't really like you retesting. But I would say talk to your recruiter about it um, and see if they will allow it, okay? But the answer is yes, yeah. Yes. I'm struggling. <laughs> really struggling. Just mute it when you got to <laughs> mute it, man. All right, next question. Can you switch from Air Force and become a Space Force officer? Yes. I don't know if there's a program in place right now that lets you go straight from enlisted Air Force and become a Space Force officer. Like, I, I think you might have to go officer in the Air Force and then transition over to Space Force. Oh, yeah. I don't think you're going to be able to commission from enlisted. In, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Major Lane? Yeah. You got anything on that? So so I know OTS and I think Academy. I know I know Academy and OTS, they do have Space Force slots. Um, I'm not sure about ROTC though. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm not sure about. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about ROTC. Okay. But I know the academy has officers there. So if you were, say, you were enlisted, and you got into the lead program mm -hmm. and went to the academy, then you, you could possibly graduate there as a Space Force officer. Mm. So, so it's possible. <clears throat> I see what you're saying. Uh, the magic man with the answer behind the. Monitors, you can't see him because we don't have a camera for him at the moment. But that's Major Lane. He's we got we got him a microphone because he answers some questions when we're stuck. So right. appreciate that help, sir. It, it, we always say Major Lane from the background, but um, <laughs> just so you all know who he is. So like, he's the one running this whole uh, show. So anytime you all are commenting, he's the one giving us the comments. He's the one making sure our audio is correct, our visuals are correct. Uh, so even though you you all don't get to see him and you just hear this uh, this voice from behind the scene, that is the one who's producing this yeah. whole show. Well, Fun fact, I, we actually do have a camera. I just choose not to be on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to set you up for success back there. So, so the, I'm going to tell you why. I almost set a camera up, and I'm going to tell you why I hadn't. Because Sergeant Cerny said he's eventually going to come in here with a talking head. Right. And I feel like if I ever set up a camera, I ruin that if we ever, right. if we right. ever do that. So yeah. I purposely never set up a camera. I wanted to have that like little picture that Every you see time. on TV when somebody's calling on the phone and you just see the little waveform wave underneath it. and just like a, Or like a little, <laughs> like a, one of those fat heads sticker things. You just have it in here and just like hold it up. You could have the mouth moving or something. Wait, but yeah, so if Mr. Dickey was the one that greenlit this whole thing... <clears throat> Major Lane was the one that was on the gas pedal. He was the one that pushed the whole thing forward. Um, he's the mastermind behind the production of the show, behind all the product that we use, basically all of the equipment that we use, everything to make this happen is right. his brainchild, and it would not be possible without him. So yep. just the support that we're getting from Major Lane in the background and Mr. <laughs> Dickey in the show, much appreciated. Yes. All right, let's Mr. do the Dickey next question. Dickey has something to add. Okay. Did you have something to add, sir? I was just going to add that, yes, you can commission from the Air Force into the Space Force. So we, as the Space Force stood up, they took several Air Force officers and just swapped them over to, to Space Force. If you're not in service <laughs> yet, your best bet is to commission directly into the Space Force. Um, but there are paths that where you could serve some time as an Air Force officer and switch, switch over to the Space Force. So that's when you're already an officer in Air Force. Yeah. What if you're an enlisted in the Air Force and you want to go officer in the Space Force, is there a program that gets you to direct jump or do you have to stay Air Force until you're an officer and then switch? Do you know? No, nah, there's not a direct jump. It would okay. be, it's just like apply, like an enlisted uh, guy or gal would right. apply to officer training school. It's the same gotcha. thing. Right. You'd, you'd apply for a Space Force board uh, so, and get either, you know, get selected for that and then go to officer training school and then commission in the Space right. Force. Cool. Works. All right. Let's get the next question up there. Is there a point value system that, that admissions give towards different areas of an application, i.e. Civil Air Patrol, Boy State, Captain of a Varsity Sport, et cetera? We, I can't say there's definitely like a point value. Like if you do this, it's worth this many points or this mm -hmm. is worth that many points. I will say those are all items that we are looking for on our application. We're looking for you really to be involved in some form of extracurricular that gives you the opportunity to honestly, develop as an individual, uh, but to step up and develop as a leader also, right? So character and leadership, think about those things in your extracurriculars, right? Um, things like Boy Scouts and Civil Air Patrol and hitting certain achievements in those programs do uh, are looked upon favorably in your application. So if you are part of those, like do your best to, to keep up that participation, work towards those achievements. Um, if you're not in an extracurricular, 
look look for some programs that are like that and think of ways that you can step up as a leader, contribute to your community, and really just develop yourself as a leader overall. Got it. Sure. Yeah, that, that part you're talking about looking favorably during your application, that's important to have those things because they're considerations when they're reviewing your application they'll look at what you have to offer and any experience you've got in those areas will be beneficial for your package yeah so lieutenant shatch you said that um you're going to pilot school in a couple months yes sir that's true what? that's cool <laughs> what um what aircraft are you hoping to fly and what do you have to do to fly it all right. Well, my real answer is whatever the Air Force tells me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's your Air Force you know, answer. <laughs> I, I know there are some individuals that go into it with, uh, you know, I have to fly this aircraft, uh, and if I don't, my whole life is over. Um, I wouldn't say that's necessarily my point of view. Now, I do have a, a preference. I think it would be really fascinating to to get maybe into a bomber track B one if it hangs around a little longer. But yeah. Maybe B fifty two eventually up to that the new B twenty one. That would be really cool. Yeah. Um, I can't say there's a specific thing for that aircraft. I, I don't necessarily know that yet. However, I would say um, it's going to take a lot of, you know, the similar things that the Air Force Academy taught me, right? Uh, studying, learning how to study, work well with under other individuals um, in terms of, hey, I, I get this thing really well. Here, let me help you. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not really understanding this form of training. Can you help me? And just being being humble enough to do that. So this next year is going to be quite a roller coaster for me, but I'm ready for it. Awesome. Yeah, that's you bring up a good point. Um, I've never seen people rely on each other in a team aspect as much as they do in the military, specifically in the Air Force. <laughs> Uh, and that's a really cool opportunity, really cool part of it is if you are good at something or bad at something, you can look around you and you can either get help or give help to somebody and bring the whole team up and make it a benefit for everyone involved. So it's definitely the most, I mean, you see, and you see it everywhere. Like it's not like in the civilian side, you see it, but it's like niche little markets where there's like these specific environments where it flourishes. The Air Force is full of it. You know, if somebody's good at something, they're probably going to reach out and try to help out. And that's just a really cool part of it. So keep that up um, and you'll find people to help. And eventually you'll be the pro and you'll have to pay it forward and, yeah. and let the let the next gen know what's up. So, that's, yeah. Definitely. All right. Next one. Can I get into the academy on academics alone or do I need to gain some service hours and play sports? So that's a great question. Mm hmm. Who wants uh, to take it? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, is it possible? Sure, I, I suppose it is possible, but you'd really have to be exceptional in, in the academic realm for the most part, right? Though uh, the Air Force Academy really does look at a whole person um, <clears throat> aspect, right? So you want to be well-rounded in academics, physical fitness, and volunteer service, service hours. I mean, service hours are great. Um, like I said, anything could happen, right? But for the most part, I would definitely highly, highly encourage looking for leadership opportunities, uh, volunteer service, and um, physical fitness as well. <laughs> gotcha. Um, There's a comment that came up. I don't know if we want to put it up on screen. Nope, he put it up on screen. <laughs> um, so this is funny, and to lighten the mood, sorry if we had the mood way down. We make enough jokes at my expense, but I appreciate you, the natural lifter. Um, sadly, yes, I have been told that before. Next question, please. <laughs> That's so funny. So oh, real man. quick, real quick, going back to what um, Hong had, or Lieutenant Hong had said. Um, could you give any like advice on some of the volunteer? And same thing as uh, Lieutenant Shatz. Some of y'all, some of the volunteer work that you all did to put on your application. Yeah, in my particular case, I was the president of my National Honor Society which essentially mm -hmm. meant I uh, organized a lot of volunteer events. So there was just a whole plethora of different volunteer events that I was at, whether that's um, volunteering with my church or organizing like eco drives back in high school. Um, it's like five years ago now. So right, I'm right. Still struggling a bit to remember, but uh, just these processes that really um, helped focus on the needs of others and focus on like ingraining in your community. Um, to be completely honest, I feel like I enjoy volunteer work a lot more now after I graduated from the Air Force Academy, whereas when I was in high school, it was usually more stressed, and right. I, I didn't do it necessarily for the right reasons, which I think I would encourage more high schoolers to do. So when when you were doing your volunteer work in high school, you knew 
you had certain amount of hours to do because your 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 plan was to join the academy. So as you're coordinating your volunteer uh, events, you you got that in the back of your mind, like okay, I, I've done this, I got this many hours. No, no, there's no like baseline. You have to volunteer this many hours. Um, it's just however much you want to, I guess. However much. Okay. You yeah. So you you weren't trying to a- attain a certain number. You were just doing as many events as possible and, and putting it on your application. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say that's the case. Okay, awesome. And uh, Lieutenant Schatz? I was also a member of National Honor Society at my high school. I was Uh-oh. not the president, but your <laughs> you know, service hours through there. Um, we had a certain amount for the club that you had to achieve uh, each quarter. I, I couldn't tell you what that number was. Um, but the most, most of my community service was, uh, through civil air patrol. Again, I didn't really have a, a, an hours goal for that. It was more like that event sounds really cool, or I know I can contribute to this. And then that's just how I devoted it. Um, a little bit of opportunities, a little bit of, you know, Hey, this is, this is unique. I want to give back in this way. Gotcha. Thank you. all. Hey, cool. can, Thanks for the can answer. I add to that just a little bit? Just yes, to, of course. to kind of round out the question, and it kind of stems back to the question, the previous one. Um, you know, there's no set formula out there, and I believe one of the, somebody answered out there, uh, you know, it's a board score that happens at Academy Admissions that, talk, mm-hmm. that, that determines what your likelihood of, of getting through the program and then serving as a, as a officer in the Air Force or Space Force. So while the Air Force and Space Force really want uh, you know, people who are STEM inclined, who, who could, are strong in engineering and math, those kind of things. Um, they are really looking for people that can lead. That's the bottom line. It's when you leave the Air Force Academy, you're not going out there to be a, to, to crunch numbers. Mm-hmm. You're going out there to lead airmen. And that's why it's a whole package concept that, uh, that the folks are looking for, the admissions folks at the Air Force Academy are looking for. So you've got to build a, pro- a package, an application that encompasses all of those things that you do to better yourself, to better your community, to, to help, you know, your neighbor, basically to lead people uh, that, you know, when other people don't step up to lead, that's what they're looking for. Plus all that other academic stuff. Good stuff. Thanks for that, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Now we're jumping into the last bit of the show. We're going to do the lightning round, which is basically where we shorten our answers as close to a sentence as possible, basically. Just try to get the answers out as fast as possible. We'll get to as many questions as we can. If we don't get to your question in this show, use that phone number, that website, and that QR code, and we will get those answers to you. So with that being said, let's see how fast Major Lane from the background can click. (laughs) I've been working on my lightning round. Did the LT have a PPL before applying to AFA? So did she have a private pilot license before applying to the academy? Man. I was in the middle of it, but I got middle it before. Basic. Okay, cool. So you're already, pro- you're already kind of chasing that down. Gotcha. Cool. But you don't have to. Correct. Got it. Next. If I am a college transfer with no SAT score yet, with the right hard work and taking an SAT, is it still possible to get into the academy if I meet age requirements? Yes, there's three, four thumbs up. Hoo-hoo. Boom. Next question. He's like, oh, man, starting to scroll. Is Air Force Academy after basic training or something you apply for after your enlistment? So those are two separate different tracks. Mm-hmm. Enlistment is going to be something that you will do if you want to go as an enlisted member of the Air Force. And officer training uh, you can do through a variety of different paths, but the Air Force Academy is one of those paths, and you wouldn't actually make that jump from the enlisted side. You right. would go directly to the Air Force Academy without be, being enlisted. Real real basic. I know it's lightning around, but enlistment only requires a high school diploma. You can join right out of high school. The officer side, when we talk about the officer side, that's going to require you to get a four-year degree. You can get that four-year degree through the academy, or you can go through ROTC, or you can do it on your own. That's the difference between enlisted and officer when we, when we talk about uh, the different sides of the house. That's it. All right. Second Lieutenant Sabatella, uh, Civil Air Patrol. We want to do more events and community fairs to recruit more pro- prospective cadets for the United States Air Force. How can we have more collaboration from the United States Air Force to promote? Thanks. That's – so I would say – Okay. Yeah, I was going to say we'll point that out to Mr. Dickey because we appreciate collaborations <laughs> for sure. Yeah, with a one-sentence answer. 
talk to your local <laughs> talk to your local recruiter. They'll have everything that you need to know about events and partnerships in the area that will help you collaborate there. Also, we're doing some work here from the headquarters to incorporate CAP on our website and a couple other things. So it's in work, but the best way is to dial in your local recruiter to get involved in some of the events that are planned uh, for regular recruiting activities. Definitely. Period. Nailed it. First try. One sentence. <laughs> Perfect. And of course, there are some answers that are not going to fit in one sentence, but that's okay. We'll do our best to go quickly. All right. All right next one. Thank you, sir, by the way. Does the Academy have a rugby program? Ooh, yes, they up. do. Thumbs up. Yep. All right. I think we're yes. national champions, too. So. Oh, a little winning. bit of play. A little bit of play. Winning. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Thank you. Lieutenant. What's the best way to get a represent representative recommendation? Ooh, we'll let those with the most experience go for that one. Yeah. Lieutenant Hong, how'd, how, uh, how'd you do it? Uh, I'm not sure about best way. Uh, just go to your congressman, local congressman's website, and they should have a apply for a service academy nomination link and follow that process. It's just a normal admissions process. Gotcha. Well, based on the rank on your chest, it worked, which means it's definitely effective. So <laughs> that's great advice. Anybody else have any tips or tricks on that one? Deadlines. Meet the deadlines. Um, a lot of those packages are required to either be mailed in or handed in in person, you know, like not over the internet. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you're tracking the requirements from your congressman or your representatives and setting personal deadlines, I'd say at least a week in advance, because if you miss a deadline, they are typically not, you know, they won't accept a late application. Gotcha. Cool. As a follow up, uh, what if you don't have the access to the representative or you can't get it? Is there any other way to get in, say, for example, an officer? that's already in or has been in? Yeah, there's um, a, so, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead hey, all three. <laughs> the congressional nomination is required by law to get into the Air Force Academy. There are some, I would say more obscure uh, nominating sources. I wouldn't rely that rely on those as your primary source, mm. um, but definitely at a minimum, you should be looking at your two, your two state senators, your district representative and the vice president nomination. Gotcha. Wow. A vice, so like vice president of the U.S. nominee, like, is that? Whew. So you said it's a That's mandate. I always, I always, I always thought that that was just a highly recommended thing. You said mandate. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I just want to meet somebody that actually got the vice president. <laughs> like that letter is like, geez, you got some you connections. Know somebody. You know somebody. <laughs> he said, uh, who gets to be the, mas the mascot? You've got to, uh, get into the Air Force Academy, and then you apply apply for the team, and uh, they'll choose someone. Do you know any mascots? I, I do know one friend uh, that was it, but usually they don't like to say it. So I was going to say it's got to be like an, an anonymous thing yeah. like, where they're like, uh, it's just like super chill, like nobody knows, and like you just drop that later in life, and people are like, what? You were the guy. Yeah, That's cool. All right, next question. Will the summer seminar program help with applications? I feel like yes, right? Anything's going to help. I mean, yes, it, it provides a good experience, but I will say that it, it doesn't have a direct bearing on your app, on your admission to the Air Force Academy. So if you don't get into summer seminar, don't sweat it. doesn't mean you're not going to get accepted to the Air Force Academy and vice versa. Just because you get accepted in summer seminar doesn't mean you get accepted into the Air Force Academy. Okay. The requirements to get accepted into those two things are, are very different. And I think the Air Force Academy is taking more of a, a – a lean towards a like a, a recruitment tool for the summer seminar. It looks good. It shows your interest if you've been to it and you, kind of your your long term dedication to getting into the academy. But that's that's about it. I would say in terms of weight on your application. Uh, the major Lane said that his boy just got picked up for uh, for that program. He's going this summer, so they say. Uh, Make it hard for him. <laughs> Make it hard for him. <laughs> um, for, for our people in the chat um, who are answering questions, we need to make sure we, somebody reaches out to Cal Marsh. My, my recruiting background would deem Cal as a highly qualified um, and interested individual based off of his questions. So somebody reach out to him. He's trying to join. That's, a, that's pointed. <laughs> this man's in here dropping he's, knowledge. Yeah, he's asking proper punctuation. He's asking real <laughs> questions. Yeah. Like he's trying to join. Somebody yeah. help him. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's good to see. All right, next question. 
Are you using AGI assistance for evaluation and identification of ideal candidates? What's AGI? I, um, uh, Mr. Dickey? <laughs> so, yeah, the answer is, I don't know. Uh, no, the, um, so, you know, the admissions department at the Air Force Academy has several methods to how they uh, evaluate candidates. And so it, not only how they evaluate them, but how they reach out to try to recruit candidates into the, mm -hmm. into the Air Force Academy. All of it depends on, you know, uh, legal means for us to evaluate a person as a military uh, branch. So it's different from any other kind of advertisement or recruitment. Uh, that you could think of, we've got to we've got to adhere to the law that says we can't try to recruit anybody under 16. Um, so we're, you know, we not when I say we, I don't. I, I'm saying we as an Air Force. Um, the Air Force Academy runs those if they have sort of an algorithm or something that they do to try to seek out high potential candidates. Um, I'm not. I have. I've never seen it. Uh, I do know that they look at lists like, you know, National Honor Society and they look at SAT scores and they, you know, they look at any kind of extracurricular stuff that's available publicly uh, when they go and seek out these folks. I hope that helps. Gotcha. Something just hit my mind. I know we're in lightning round. All those NIL contracts and these college players making money, is that stuff doesn't apply to the uh, the academy, right? It actually does, and that's uh, it's one of those things. It's uh, it's kind of weird space right now that wow. the academy is trying to work through. And just I've, just talking with some of their admissions guys and gals, um, they are trying to work the way through the legalities of that. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's uh, it's been interesting to say the least for them. I don't know what the the bottom line is on whether or not they can be in a pizza commercial in Colorado Springs, but uh, um, I do know there's some some work that's being done to try to make it you know kind of an equal playing field with the rest of the the nation wow gotcha. that is interesting i did not know that and now you know <laughs> <laughs> all right next question Need a sound effect yeah what sports are there i i, I mean they have all, rugby all of that and football all of them <laughs> all of them i think the question would be yeah. what sports aren't there <laughs> high impact underwater basket weaving <laughs> yes i i will say we got a different assortment of men's and women's sports at the division one level. You can find all of those on goairforcefalcons.com. Um, Cause I'm not going to sit here and list all of them. for you. <laughs> that's, that's where well, you can go to find more information about it. You, what was that? You website one time? You said go airforcefalcons.com. Yes, sir. That's correct. Got it. Cool. Check that website out. And what was that? Lieutenant Hong? You can always create your own sports teams or sports clubs. As what? Well. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, we're in the lightning round. We don't want to stay too long. On it. <laughs> more information, all good <laughs> stuff. Go check out that website. You can find out more. But a lot of sports, all of them, pretty much. All right. Has the Academy banned the use of ChatGPT Ooh. and other AI-based technology by cadets? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. Everybody's I don't like, have a great answer, but I will say that we do have the honor system, which we take very seriously. Right. Uh, so you have to be honest, yeah. Yes. So is it something that's discouraged? Yeah. Yeah. Shh, I'm asking him. <laughs> he said probably. Did, was chat GP, chat, chat GPT a thing when you all were in the um, academy? No. Okay. It's only been a recent development right. for high, high broadcast use. Okay, next question. When you're in college, do you join ROTC or should you wait until you join the Air Force? I think we, 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 we already that did this yeah. question. I was getting halfway through it and I was like, this sounds familiar. Next one. Does Space Force participate in the Academy? North South. <laughs> North South. Yes. <laughs> the Space Force does participate in the Academy. And I was just following you because I was like, I think they do, but I'm not 100% sure. They don't have their they have, Academy yet. Right. They've got a they've got a certain amount of slots in each graduating class at the Air Force Academy that commissioned di directly into the Space Force. Boom. That's a lightning round answer. All right, next question. How does promotion work in the Air National Guard? Thanks. Um, for the enlisted side, I, I know how that works. Um, basically, you're going 
your position that you hire on to, uh, it tells you the max grade that you can be in that position, mm. uh, max rank that you can be when you hire into that position. So in order for you to get a, a rank outside of that posi- outside of that position, you would have to hire on to another one um, that has a higher rank. So that's how it works for the enlisted side. The officer side, um, I'm, I wanna say it works the same way, but I, I could be wrong. I would say I'll reach out to a recruiter and, and narrow down that answer. Boom. All right. Is it true that only one person can be selected from a high school? East, West. No. No. <laughs> All right. Next question. Would USAFA or United States Air Force Academy rather see APs or dual enrollment in high school? Oh, here's, that's Kyle Marsh. That's who you're talking about earlier. Yeah, he's got the good questions. Got the good questions. Definitely educated already. <laughs> <clears throat> So, would the Air Force Academy like to see either those either. things that he said? Is there yeah. is there a priority, or is it one or the other? We I I would say on this subject, if you're going to take either AP or dual en, uh, enrollment, make mm-hmm. sure you're able to do well in those classes. Right? We'd much rather you be at a normal level class and excel than take a bunch of APs mm. uh, and, and not do. Yeah. Hmm. So that you sense. could have a. You could have a 4.0 GPA with no AP classes, and that may look better than like a 3.0 GPA with a bunch of AP classes. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right, next question. Can I be an F-15 pilot with glasses? I think so. Yeah. yeah pilot yeah, is correctable to 2020 vision. What's that? As long as your vision is correctable to 2020, you should be okay to be a pilot. Okay, so would they do something about you needing glasses? Uh, you just got to wear glasses when you fly. Okay. Yeah. Or kind I mean, I, found it, I needed glasses two years ago, right before I graduated. And I mean, I'm still okay. I just have to make sure my vision is 2020 while I'm flying. Well, gotcha. And contacts are okay as well? I can't. I don't know that. Okay. For sure. Yeah, they are. You have to go through a program where you get specially fitted for contacts and approved by the flight doctor. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you can wear contacts in, in any flying job. Helps to have somebody. You can't, uh, you can't have, uh, you can't have corrective surgery though, prior to coming into the air force. If you oh. do that, they'll, they'll DQ you. So don't go get LASIK or, or P, PRK. Is that what it's yep. called? Yep. Don't do that prior to coming in or, or it'll automatically disqualify you. Oh my. Good information. Might it have just is. save somebody's career. Yeah. <clears throat> For sure. It's always nice to have someone with uh, aviation experience right. in our lineup. So thank you. Appreciate that, sir. All right, next one. All right. I was not here for the answer, so could you repeat the answer? When you're in college, do you join ROTC or should you wait until you join the Air Force? Okay, so that one was the... We were basically um, explaining the difference between in the enlisted side and the um, in the officer side. Um, so they're saying, do you do you join ROTC now or do you wait until you enlist? Yeah, you can cue me up. Yeah. yeah so if you're in college, um, ROTC is a program to where you can commission uh, right after ROTC. So, or right out of college, rather. So I would recommend that if you're already in college, you know you want to join, go ahead and join ROTC. However, if you get through college and you haven't been through ROTC, then you can always apply for officer training school and become an officer, or you can take the ASVAB and enlist. Uh, so those are the options there. But if you know you want to join the Air Force, I would highly recommend you go ahead and join ROTC because the only requirement to be a part of ROTC is to be a full-time student. It is probably one of the easiest ways. No, let me take that back. It's probably one of the easiest acceptance ways, but then you got to get through the program to join. But, uh, again, as long as you're a full-time student at a university that offers ROTC, you can join ROTC, and you'll take it as an elective class. <clears throat> so it would be just like you're taking gym or whatever else in college. So that's what I recommend. Major Lane from the background, everybody. Major Lane from the background. <laughs> I'm going to get that thing. I'm going to do it. All right, next question. If you join, will you always be a pilot? Ooh, no, not unless you go in and join as a pilot and choose to stay a pilot your whole career. But no, you don't have to always be a pilot. 
He said, he said 10, 10 more. more. 10 we're more done. and we're done. All right. So, yeah, the, basically you have a choice of a bunch of different career fields. If you happen to choose pilot and you keep you start doing it and you want to change that, you can even change your career field once you're in. Yeah. So there, options, options, options. There are so many more <clears throat> careers in being a pilot in the Air Force. Yep. So. so many. So many. All right. Question number 10 on the last bit of the Super Lightning Round. I am in Jacksonville, Florida. I was am interested in the Air National Guard, but cannot get a recruiter on the phone or in person. I got a 61 on the ASVAB. Ooh, um, excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, the the QR code, let's put that back up on the screen along with that phone number. Also, we have people in the chat. Hopefully, somebody in the chat can take care of you and get you um, get you in contact with the recruiter. Also, the Aim High app, if you have it, uh, there's a part on there where you can find a recruiter. You just put in your zip code, and it should give you the recruiter responsible for your area. Um, I'm assuming if you're having problems getting in touch with the Air National Guard recruiters, you may have a the wrong number um, because they usually they work on base, um, so they they usually answer the phone there they're on base. So just keep caught, keep trying, um, use the all your assets as possible, and try to get in touch with that recruiter. Okay. And that's 61. ASVAB is definitely high enough to get you in. There's plenty of jobs out there that'll that'll qualify with a 61. Definitely. 61 yeah. is a great score. <clears throat> and the cool thing about those uh, resources also is those have map features where you can actually see other recruiters that are also in the area. So if you're not getting, having luck with one particular person, try somebody else. Right. They may not be in the exact same area, but they could be close enough that can make it worth it. So check those maps and those other features. All right, number nine. Any restrictions on religious practices in USAFA BMT? Nope. As long as it is a, I think as long as it's a recognized religion, I think, right? And then it has like a traditional, or not traditional, but if it has a recognized process, because- I, 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 I wouldn't say that there's like no restrictions, but for the most part, it is extremely accommodating. Uh, we really try our best to accommodate all religious practices. I would agree with that. All right, uh, number eight. Hello. What are the jobs with the highest ASVAB score requirements? Hello. So you have you have a lot of jobs that require a 72 uh, general. Those would be like your linguist, uh, uh, broadcast general, or it's no longer broadcast journalism. It's PA specialist. PA, that's yeah. you. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's requires cool. a 72. Um, there's also a job um, called the uh, scientific application specialist. That requires like an 84 electrical score on your, on your ASVAB. Um, but to just name them off the top of my head, I'll be, I'll be, I don't know them all. Um, so I would say get with the recruiter uh, and try to figure out uh, which jobs those are. I will say this. If you score high on the ASVAB and you can qualify for those jobs, we're looking for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but the higher ones are in the 70s. Yep. For sure. And that's out of 99 potential points that you yes. can get on the ASVAB. All right. Next question. How long does it take an enlisted member to become an officer? I'm going to turn this one over to Major Lane in the background because he has firsthand experience doing exactly that. Sir. <laughs> uh, it depends on which route you go. So there are programs where you can actually um, go to the academy from enlisted, so that'll take you four years uh, if you don't go to the prep school, which will add a, an additional year. <clears throat> if you go officer training school, I believe they are nine weeks long now. I think it's eight weeks, but then they got like a week zero. Yeah. Somewhere around that time frame, uh, eight to nine weeks. So o OTS is definitely the fastest route. Um, and then you can go through ROTC as well. And so depending on how close you are to your degree and where you're at, I, um, I know we when I was teaching at the University of Georgia, go dogs. Uh, <laughs> when I was teaching there, the we, uh, we, we had a couple of people who joined, I think, their junior year. And we had one person, and I still can't remember how we pulled it off, but he joined his senior year, went to uh, field training, and commission. Wow. So, uh, so there's ways that, um, depending on what program they have at ROTC, they can um, hook you up that way as well. But it just depends on which commissioning route you go. Thank there you. There it is. All right. Next hey, one. just want to add real quick. Yes, you got to get your degree first. Also, OTS yes. is is a fast way to do it, but only after you've completed everything you need to do to get your uh, yeah. your bachelor's degree. Yep. And they can 100%. you can apply for OTS one year after joining enlisted. You have to be at least one year. Mm, I'm not sure about I believe that. it's a one-year yeah. requirement. The, the recruiters in the room are shaking their head, yes. Yeah. Then yes. Sergeant Reed said so. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I'm currently in AFROTC. Is it possible to attend Army Airborne School? Yes. I, I, I think it's possible. Yeah. You just got to have a reason to get accepted. Right. Yeah, they, they do. I think I'm still hot, right? Are, yeah, so they do uh, programs over the summer to where they can go and do different things. So you can go um, overseas and do some um, foreign language type stuff over there. You can actually, I think they have exchange programs with the academy, so you can kind of go up to the academy and see what life is like up there. And then they have jump schools and airborne school opportunities as well. But you have to be doing fairly well in ROTC, and your, your detachment commander has to uh, approve you to go to those things. Mm -hmm. All right, next one. Last five. Five more? Yep, last five. <clears throat> I was Jack's Valley superintendent. What is what is your favorite memory of BCT and Jack's? They're all smiling, so it's got to yeah. be stories. What, what is Jack's? And what's BCT? So, so B uh, BC, yeah, go ahead, LT. You got it. <laughs> so BCT is basic cadet training. So it's our boot camp. So I know someone asked earlier what uh, if we have boot camp. Yeah, we have boot camp for the Air Force Academy. JAX is the second half of our basic cadet training, our boot camp. And it's uh, when we're in, um, we're outside in the dust, basically, uh, not at the dorm. And my favorite memory at JAX Valley um, is probably uh, sweeping the dust in a field of dust with um, like a rake. We didn't even have like a mop. We were just raking the dust, which as you can see, is pointless. Uh. All right, Mr. Dickey, uh, what's your favorite memory from BCT? Oh man, there's a, there's a bunch, but, uh, I would say probably when it was over would be my favorite, but the, uh, um, the march down there and the march back. And so you march all the way from the cadet wing down to Jack's Valley where you live in tents for, I don't know how, I forgot how long it was, two weeks or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you march back as a cadet wing and it was m marching back after that was, uh, it felt like I'd accomplished something. So that was cool. That's cool. Sense of accomplishment. All right. And Lieutenant Schatz, what was your favorite? Uh, so I actually had the opportunity to work basic training as cadre. I mean, I had plenty of memories down at Jack's Valley as a, as a basic cadet. Uh, we'll just leave those to the side. Um, but I would say overall favorite memory in Jack's Valley as a whole was was working as cadre. So that would be the individuals that do the, the instructing and the training and some of the yelling. Uh, and I got to do what we call the assault course with mm. my basic cadets. And you're the first time through the assault course, they do it by themselves. The second time through the cadre do it. I wasn't going to, they kind of harassed me into it, threw me under the bus through some of it, but it was really fun for team development, unique opportunity for me, for sure. Gotcha. Very cool. Thanks guys. All right. Next question. How common is it for AFA graduates to get into the Uniform Services University for medical school? Uh, uh, let's see. Let me fire up that one. Cue it up. Got yeah. it. Queued up. Who do you want to answer? Oh, I mean, Not me. who, who, wants, we'll who go wants to Lieutenant. answer? We'll go Lieutenant. Well, I'm going to turn your microphone off. <laughs> All right, Lieutenant uh, Long, you yeah. have been selected. So I, I think there are a number of opportunities when you graduate from the Air Force Academy, but okay. um, it is quite competitive. I, I This is a complete guess, but I'm guessing the range is of like 10, 10 to 20 maybe cadets out of a graduating class of 1,200 get into gotcha. the medical services. All right. And we're going to go back to all of our people here in a second, but uh, I thought for a moment Sergeant Reed was just leaving me here. <laughs> and he just came back, so I'm in luck. I'm on you. Oh, now. man. There you go. Now he's back. Can you get into the Air Force Academy with a GED? No, I don't think so. You could join the you can join the enlisted side with a GED. Uh, you would not be able to join the academy with a GED. You would need a bachelor's degree. Three more. Last three. Yeah, you just need a high school diploma for the for the Air Force Academy, not not a bachelor's degree. So. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Yeah. For the academy, That's all right. Yes. That's all right. <laughs> I mean, yes. once you you get your degree. Yes, you will get a degree. Go, but you don't have to have one going in. All right. And what we got? We got to pick the last three well. That's why it's taking so long. <laughs> Is there a week of only eating MREs during basic training? Mm. There used to be. Beast. During, during uh, I remember when I went to Warrior Week. We, that was what, that's how old I am. Oh. Um, 
they um we we ate MREs probably like two or three times. Yeah. And then we got hot meals. Okay. Do they still do that for beasts? I uh, I don't remember honestly. I've had a lot of I've had a lot of training environments where I've only had MREs for weeks at a time or potentially months, like deployments and stuff. Yeah. It's not very often that you have to exclusively eat MREs. Most of the time you either have a choice or you're provided hot meal opportunities. So even when I was deployed to, you know, Qatar, like the dining facility there is fantastic. Their yeah. sandwiches, chicken sandwich, what good was your, stuff. What was your favorite thing in the MRE? It depends on which MRE. Honestly, like the secret to MREs is the vegetarian ones. Like I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. Like MREs are not like the kind of food where you expect a gourmet plate. Right. right. It's, you get what you get, and there's high calories. They're designed to last a long time, so you trade you trade off. You're not going to get delectable food, but the vegetarian ones taste better, and they have way better like accessories. Like you always will get like the good peanut butter in that one, right? Or the Skittles, <laughs> or the good stuff. And I'm telling you, like the vegetarian options, like as much as you know, I don't have a vegetarian thing. Like trust me, it's worth it. There's still yeah. as much protein in it, still as many calories, um, and you know, you can still tell what it is that you're yeah. eating. So they're, they're better. But. Real quick for the lieutenants, did you all eat MREs in, in, in the academy? Was there any point where you only ate MREs for like a week-long period? Uh, <laughs> our version of survival training, we, okay. we did early MREs. It was a special time. Special time. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I mean, creamy spinach fettuccine, best MRE. That's the sure. best one? I think they give them different MREs. Yeah. <laughs> creamy spinach work- fettuccine. I was still working on like ham meat. <laughs> Or, I'm just kidding. That's not a real one. My, my favorite part cheese. of the MREs was the, the, the crackers, and they give you some, not the peanut butter, but the cheese The spread. cheese stuff, oh. yeah. It's like uh, cheese whip, but yeah. it's in like a foil container. You squeeze it out on there. It's delicious. And some of that stuff comes with jalapenos in it. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> you, be trading, you be trading watch for that. Yeah, you can. <laughs> You could trade a lot with that holiday right. cheese. See, we started a great conversation <laughs> right at the end of the show. All right, let's do two more questions, and we got to get out of here. All right, when applying to USAFA, is it better to not submit bad exam scores such as ACT if you are retaking? Better to submit bad and update later? Does it count? Does something bad look better or worse than nothing at all? Good you question. need those scores in there, but we super score. So even if you are retaking, put those old scores in, and as soon as you retest and get a higher score, it will replace whatever lower scores you have. And what's oh, cool gotcha. is it works over multiple tests. So like, say, for the ACT, if you score really good in English but really bad in math, and then you gotcha. take the test again and do the exact opposite, we'll keep the highest scores over all the tests. All right. Awesome. I didn't realize they were doing super scoring uh, for those for those yeah. scores. You can take this one. All I don't right. know what it is yet, so no pressure. All right. There we go. Last question. If my son were accepted into the academy, does he get to decide what courses he takes, or does the academy make that its decision based on his high school scores and where the availability in each course is? Good question. How much choice do you have? You, you can completely choose your own major, and uh, there is a really rigorous core curriculum, though. But for the most part, yeah, I chose my major uh, first day of, like, sophomore year on, like, the last possible day. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. As long as you make those deadlines. You guys were talking about them earlier. Yeah. Deadlines. Super important. We do have lots of required core classes, though, which may be some classes that you wouldn't want to take depending on what you like. Like you will take a lot of engineering courses. So if you're not STEM oriented, learn how to study STEM classes because you will go through some. If you're not humanities and social sciences oriented, Learn to study it because you're going to have to take some of those classes. It's part of being a, a well-rounded officer, knowledgeable in those areas. So that's why those core classes are required. Got it. Solid information. All right. As a bonus for you guys, we get a bonus question. What's the air power equivalent for Space Force? Mm. That, I don't know if they've got one. So we've got Aim High, right, for Air Force, and then Semper Supra for Space Force. And Semper Supra is Latin, and it means always above, which is pretty dope how did you know that i'm fairly (laughs) fluent in latin (laughs) no 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 how did you know that that was their thing uh honestly because our commander uh major general ed thomas likes to finish off his videos with semper supra and aim high okay like that's his thing he does does both of them so that would be the equipment yeah if he said it so (laughs) semper (laughs) supra is the closest thing we've got to it for right now unless unless i'm missing something mr dickie are you ready on something i don't know yet to infinity and beyond. 
Get no, no, no. 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 <laughs> if, you, if you really want to break it down, it'd take longer than this. But air power, sea power, land power, space power, they're all different. Uh, you know, that's what the components call them. And they're all based on the domain. Okay. So there could even be cyber power. We just say air power because it sounds a lot cooler than sea power. Anyway, so yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. I agree. All right. That wraps the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our guests, Mr. Dickey and lieutenants. You guys have been awesome. Uh, thanks for hanging with us for the past hour and a half. And we cannot wait to see what the show has in store. Catch us next time, two weeks from today, Tuesday at 2 o'clock. It's easy to remember. And if you got stuff that you want to show people or show this off to your friends, these will be stored on Facebook and YouTube and all the platforms that we share on. So like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Follow it. Hit the notifications thingy. I sound like one of those YouTubers now, but like do that and <laughs> it'll keep you up to speed on when we are going to do the next show. So thank you so much to our guests. You guys were awesome. We are out of here. 14 days, 222, Tuesdays, 2 o'clock. See y'all. We hope that you enjoyed this episode of The Back and Forth brought to you by Headquarters Air Force Recruiting Service. It is a privilege for us to bring you all the information and insider insight into the exciting world of the United States Air Force. Remember, this show is all about you. We want to make sure we're providing you information and answers you need to make an informed decision about your future. So make sure to join us every other Tuesday with your questions, your feedback, and any ideas you have for future episodes. We are all ears. Don't forget to subscribe to our social media channels for even more exciting content. And also visit AirForce.com for all the latest information on serving as a total force airman. And with that, until next time, aim high. <laughs>